In this lesson, we'll begin learning how to harness the true power of computers, which is the ability to perform repetitive tasks very, very quickly, and we often use loops to do this. There are two types of loops in MATLAB and Octave, for and while loops. Both may be used to do the same task, but usually one loop is best suited for a particular problem. For loops usually are more useful when you want to execute a set of commands a known amount of times, or n times. While loops are very useful when you want to execute a set of commands as long as a certain test condition is true. The general form of the for loop is the following. We say for variable, some loop variable, will equal some values. Commands will be executed and then we come to the end of the loop. So let's look at an example. We say for and i is our loop variable will equal 1 colon 2 colon 5. And we know from previous lessons this means 1, 3, and 5. The commands that will be executed will be a is equal to i squared and then display a. When we come to the end, we go back up to the top of the loop. So what will happen in this loop is i will take on the values of 1, then 3, then 5 every time the loop is completed. So we start off with i equals 1, i squared is also 1, so a gets the value of 1, we display 1 to the screen, and we come to the end of the loop. We jump back up to the top, i now takes on the next value, which is 3. 3 squared is 9, we display 9 to the screen, and we come to the end of the loop. We go back up to the top of the loop, i takes on the final value, which is 5, a is equal to 25 now, we display 25 to the screen, end. i has no more values it can be assigned, so the loop terminates. We can directly state the values that the loop variable will be assigned in the following way. We can say i equals bracket 9, negative 8, 3. So i will be first assigned 9, then negative 8, then 3. So i is equal to 9, we display 9 to the screen, jump back up to the top, i is now negative 8, we display negative 8, go back up to the top, i now has 3, we display 3 to the screen, and i has no more values, it can be assigned, so the loop is over. If we then display the value of i, the last value of i, which was 3, will be displayed. We can use the loop variable as an index for an array to access the various elements in the array. So for example, we can say i is equal 1, colon, 4. So i will take on the values of 1, 2, 3, then 4. So when i is 1, we say the first element of b will be equal to 1 times 3, or 3. So the value of 3 gets assigned into the first element of b. We come to the end, go back up to the top. i now has the next value, uh, 2. So b of 2, or the second element of b, will equal 2 times 3, or 6. Go back up to the top. What's the value of i now? It's 3. So the third element of b will equal 3 times 3, which is 9. Go back up to the top. i now takes on the value of 4. The fourth element of b will equal 4 times 3. So what's stored in b is 3, 6, 9, and 12. So if we display the third element of b, 9, will be displayed on the screen. We can prematurely uh, terminate a loop using the break command. In this example, we assign four different values to an array called score. And we can say that this is the, the, the scores uh, from a quiz for a certain class. If we want to display them, Vertically, we can say display score prime. And we get 9, 10, 7, and 6. If we want to do the same thing with a for loop, we can use the following set of commands. We say that we want to go from i equals 1 to the last element of score, or n. We can say n is equal to the number of elements of score, which is 4 in this case. So this is like saying i equals 1 to 4, and then we'll display 
each element of score every time we go through the loop. So when i is 1, we'll display the first element of score. When i is 2, we'll display the second element of score all the way down to the nth element, where n in this case is 4. And we see we get the exact same result, 9, 10, 7, and 6. Now let's look at how we can calculate the mean using a for loop. So before we could say mean of score, and let me comment out this section of code right here for a second. And we see the mean is 8. If we want to do the same thing with a for loop, we can do it in the following way. We need to add each element of score, 9, 10, 7, and 6, to a running total. And then we'll divide by the total number of elements after this loop is completed. So we can say m is equal to m plus score of i. where m will be our running total. And then after we're done, we can say m is equal to m divided by n. If we try to run this code now, we'll get an error because m has not been assigned an initial value. So whenever you need to calculate a sum of various elements in an array, you always need to initialize the running total variable, in this case m, to some value, usually 0. So if we run this code, and let's comment out this code at, at the top. Oh, silly me, I forgot to initialize the value, uh, or, or assign the score some values. We, we see that m is initially 0. When i is 1, we'll add 0 plus the value of the first element of score, which is 9. So m now has the value of 9, and that's displayed on the screen. Go back up to the top. i is now 2. So we add whatever is in m, which is 9, to the second element of score, which is 10, and we get 19. Go back up to the top, i is equal to 3. So we say whatever's in m, 19, plus the third element of score, which is 7, we get 26. Go back up to the top, i is now 4. We take whatever's in m, which is uh, 26, and we add the last element, which is 6, and we get 32. i can't take on any more values, so we're done with the loop. And we say m is equal to 32 divided by 4, 8. So we can calculate the mean both using the mean function and using a loop. The reason I'm showing you how to calculate the mean with this loop is because many other computer languages uh, do not have these nice built-in functions such as mean, and you'll need to uh, understand or you'll need to know how to do tasks like calculate the mean using a loop. Finally, let's look at the break command. Let's say if i is equal to 3 break. What break will do is it will break the loop that you're in and then your program will continue on. So it'll terminate the loop prematurely before i can take on every single value uh, uh, on the right side over here. So let's run this code and see what happens. Okay. n is equal to 4, m is equal to 0, i will take on the values 1, 2, 3, 4. So let's start off with the first loop. i is 1. We say m is 0. Uh, so 0 plus the first element of score, which is 9. Uh, we'll get assigned to m and displayed on the screen. So we see m is equal to 9. Then we come to this if statement. Is i equal to 3? It's not. So we ignore this if statement and continue on. We come to the end of the for loop. 
Go back up to the top, i is 2. m now has a value of 9, so 9 plus the second element of score, because i is 2, so this is 10, so 10 plus 9 will give us 19. Is i equal to 3? It is not. We ignore this if statement. Here's the end for the for loop. Go back up to the top, i is now 3. So we have m, uh, which is now 19. We add on to that 7, the third element's a score, so now m is 26. Is i 3? Yes it is, it's equal to 3. We break the loop. We don't go through the last loop where i is equal to 4, so we, we go end the loop. Now we say 26 divided by 4, which is 6.5. You should be very careful where you put your break statement in your for loop. For example, if we put the m is equal to m plus score i after this if statement, we may get a very different answer. In this case, when the loop uh, comes to the i equals 3, the third time this loop goes through, we come to this if statement before we execute the m is equal to m plus score i. So we see here that when i is equal to 1, uh, this is false, i is not equal to 3, so we can say uh, 0 plus 9, so m is equal to 9. Go back to the top, i is 2. So this is false, i is not equal to 3. We skip the if statement. Uh, we say 9 plus score of 2, which is 10, 19. Go back up to the top, i is 3. This is true, we break the loop before executing this line of code right here. Then we calculate 19 divided by 4. So it's very important that you put the break statement, if you choose to use one, in the proper location.